Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's another beautiful June morning and my brother Alex and I are headed out on the kayaks to about 50 or 60 feet of water which is a bit deeper than we normally fish but there's a rock pile out there and we haven't caught sea bass yet this season so we're going to give that a shot which kind of works out but we end up leaving that spot as you'll see later in the video and getting on a lot more action. This is actually a really fun day of fishing and uh, Right here, Alex hooked into How's it a feel? striper on a bucktail. Um, he was just dragging through the water when we were on our way up to the spot. So we hadn't quite made it, and um, you're going to see a little nice schoolie here. All right. Yeah. I like that idea. That's fucking awesome, huh? Hey, that's not a bad one. Nice little schoolie. Yeah. You know? She's biting bucktail. Yeah, nice fish. Not bad, huh? It's probably a 24 incher. Yeah, 23. 23, yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, so we're not quite there yet. It's about two miles offshore, but we were marking a lot of fish on our sonars, and it looked like big schools of porgy. So I'm just putting a gulp sandworm here on this uh, one ounce diamond jig, and I'm gonna drop it down and, and see if I can get some action uh, to break up the, the long commute. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that's just a little guy. We're fishing on a 10 inch limit, so he's gonna go back, but I'm just super thrilled with this new method of catching Porgy. Um, you know, I've only been doing this a little while. You might've seen in my last video, it was the first time that I tried it, but you don't need bait. You don't need, you know, any of the mess. Just, um, you know, a little piece of a gulp of sandworm or bloodworm, and um, it just works. All right, so we're finally on the spot. Uh, in about 50, 60 feet of water on the rock pile, and we had been here for 30 minutes and caught absolutely nothing. It was completely dead. So you might have just seen me there. I put a, a spearing on my teaser hook, and then I've got a one and a half ounce diamond jig uh, on the bottom with a piece of squid on it, and I'm just dropping that down. You'll see it's a pretty long drop, and just bouncing it on the bottom, one or two feet above the bottom, and you're gonna see here. I, you know, we finally hook into this first fish, uh, but and, you know, afterwards the bite was so slow. We uh, we left, and man, the fishing sure turned on after that. Yeah, so that's a micro sea bass if I've ever seen one. Um, although it was my first of the season, so I was pretty happy about that. Uh, we're fishing on a 16 inch limit, he's far from it, so off he goes. Okay, so at this point in the trip, we moved back to water we had already passed over, uh, from kind of where we saw the porgy before, about 20, 30 feet of water. And this is where we stayed for the entire rest of the trip. And just, we kind of went back and forth between um, using bucktails and gulp and, um, you know, dropping diamond jigs on these schools of porgy as they pass through.
And for those of you interested, I'm using a Dio Harrier rod in six and a half feet and rated the up to 50 pound test with a quantum accurate reel. And I'm using 15 pound Power Pro on the main line. And then I use an FG knot to attach two to three feet of 30 pound fluorocarbon and a tactical angler's clip at the edge, which is where I put my jigs or rigs or what have you. Yeah, so, I mean, I look at sea robins as, a, as an interference fish. There's just no way to bottom fish in the waters that I fish without catching them. Uh, I will say I tried them for the first time this year, and they are delicious. So I will try in future videos not to hate on these guys so much. And yes, if you haven't caught sea robin before, they do love to bark at you. Yep. No. Yep. Holy good God. Oh yeah, you can feel it. Little one. Right in the neck. Oh my God. It's a grand slam, all right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a slam is any three species. Uh, this fluke makes four, so we're gonna call it a grand slam. And then right here in a second, you're gonna see the fifth species. So I'm going grand slam for sure. Just jigging it. So at this point, Alex and I both are using bucktail rigs, one ounce bucktails tipped with uh, gulp grubs, and then we've got uh, some gulp on the teaser hook as well, and he hooks into a pretty nice sea bass here. It wasn't a keeper, but it was still a nice Really? Sea bass in Connecticut right. went up an inch this year, so one is 16. This guy didn't make it. This was in his mouth, a baby sea robin. What? Looks like a baby sea robin. Look at it. Don't it? That is what that is. Oh. That's crazy. Nice fish. Yeah, so you see I'm going to miss a couple of hits here. Uh, we made a little bit of a move up on our drift, and I suspect whatever was hitting it is uh, going to be on the boat shortly. Fish on. What do you got? That's a fluker, no? I don't know, it's heavy. Oh yeah, huh? Wow, what do you got, dude? You're, you're on too? Oh yeah. Mark it. Oh man, this thing is taking line. It's another uh, weak fish. Oh my God,
All right, that fish was well over the 16 inch limit, so I'm gonna keep it for the table. I've never had it before, so we'll give it a try. If you like these videos, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for upcoming videos. Thanks so much.